All right. In this video, we are going to take a look at how I created this cinematic shot from just an image. This technique is called 3D projection. You often seen this technique in some big blender artists like Ian Hubert, but in here we are going to take a deep dive into this topic and I will cover everything from scratch to finish. And on top of that, I'll be sharing some hardcore tips and tricks to take your render to the next level. So, the first thing you have to do is to enable image as plain add-on. Once you're done that, you can import any type of images directly into Blender. Then enable texture preview mode and rotate the image 90 degrees in X axis. It's time for some loop cuts. Add loop cuts wherever you see a straight line. That's it. The shortcut is Ctrl plus R. To select your vertices, you can hold Alt and click on the vertices. If you double click on G, you can move your vertices. Pro tip. When you move your vertices, if you are seeing your texture is also stretching along with that, that is the solution. Make sure you are in edit mode. On the right corner, you will be able to see an option called options and enable correct face attribution. I will be sharing these types of pro tips in the entire video. Don't miss it. Move the vertices and make shapes which is similar to the real world. Add a lot of loop cuts then align them with the objects in the image. Now it's time to extrude some faces. To do that, first of all make sure you are in edit mode. Then click 3 on your keyboard. After that click C and select the faces which you wanna extrude. Once you select everything, click E and move it. Pro tip, if you have any complex shapes in your image, you can click K to enable knife tool, then trace the image, then click enter to activate the vertices. After that, select the faces and extrude. Repeat the process several times to get better output. If you don't want specific areas of your image, you can select the edges and delete those vertices. Now I'm going to show you a small time lapse to make you understand how much details you should add to get a better result. Enough, let's get back to work. Once you are done adding loop cuts, now we can separate our objects according to their material. To do that, in the edit mode, select the faces which you want to separate from the object, then click P and separate. Imperfections makes it perfect. Nothing in the world is perfect. If it's perfect, it's not real. So let's talk about materials. For the glass, I made a basic glass shader by using glass BSDF and transparent BSDF, mixing it with a mix shader. Later that, for the scratches and dirt, I used a concrete texture and the original texture, mixing it with a diffuse BSDF. For the bumps, a noise texture connected to a bump node. That's it. If you guys wanna follow along, take a screenshot. For the bricks, I'm just making a simple setup for now, but we will work on that later. So in here, I'm connecting the image texture to the roughness and adding a color ramp. After that, I'm importing a bump node and connecting the normal to the normal and height to the image texture. Of course, there will be stretched textures. To fix that, go to your viewing mapping, then select the places which is stretched, then remap it. It's that easy. Now let's make our interior. For that I just downloaded another picture from Pexels. Then I exactly did the same just I mentioned before. So just follow along. To make the name glow, I just separated those text. Then I connected the image texture directly into the emission. Now it's time for the detailing. For that I was searching for a specific type of lamp but I didn't get anything from online so I thought of making it by myself. 
After finishing modeling, I placed it in the scene by using an array modifier. Later that, I downloaded some free models and placed it into the scene. Pro tip, to get depth to your scene, add a cube and make it bigger, then give a principal volume shader or use a volume absorption node. After all of this work, still I wasn't happy at all because it doesn't look real. As I said before, we need imperfections to make our render perfect. So let's talk about imperfections. In the real world, there is nothing such as sharp as 90 degree. So we have to implement that in the 3D world as well. So select all the sharp edges and click Ctrl D and bevel it. Still, if you look at the 3D model, you can see it's still perfect. So let's make some bumps and mistakes, right? To do that, make sure you are in edit mode, then select few edges and bring them down or bring them up. By doing this, you can make some small kind of bumps and cones and cuts in your 3D model. Still, you can see it looks too clean. So let's make it too dirty to get the realism. For that, let's jump to the shade editor. Now you can see we have already created a texture for our other parts of the model. But it's not enough. At first, let's duplicate our original image texture and principal BSDF. Then along with that, add a RGB curve node then connect them as shown in the screen. Later that, add a mix shader and connect both the principal BSDF like this. Now if you play with the curve, you can control the brightness while still keeping the realism. Then to get even more control over it, add a noise texture and a color ramp then connect it to the factor. Now you can control the darker parts and the brighter parts. Now let's make it dirty. For that, duplicate the principal BSDF and create a new image texture. Add a UV map node, then connect that UV map into the image texture. Then click new and create a new image texture. Then make sure to keep the alpha zero. Then connect them like this by adding another mix shader and make sure to connect the alpha of the image texture that we just created to the factor of the first mix shader. Now we are done with the shading. Later go to the texture paint mode and import any type of dirt PNG and start painting them. Don't overdo it, make it subtle and effective. Actually we are pretty done here. but. I want to show you something else which is more important and interesting. Yeah, environment building. But why? Why is it that important? Okay, hear me out. So if you have a good realistic model, but you don't know how to light it or you don't know how to make the environment, then whatever have you done, it's good for nothing. Just waste of time. So let me help you. First thing first. We need to make some buildings. Keep this in mind, you don't have to give that much details to the background. Make it simple. So in here, I'm using a simple cube and giving some loop cuts and extruding it to make it look like almost like a building. For the windows, I separated two faces by clicking P, then I gave wireframe modifier to those separated parts. So we will get a grill and also delete some vertices to make it look more realistic. Make sure to bevel all the edges, then let's jump to the shade editor. In here, I just gave a basic shader with a concrete image texture. That's it, there is nothing complicated going on here. For the light, I'm importing a plane, then I'm going to the shade editor, then on the emission, giving a slight yellow orange color. To make the light flutter, Keep your cursor on top of the strength, then click I to give a keyframe. Then directly go to the graph editor, then add a noise modifier and play with the values. Then duplicate the models several times and keep them 
behind the building. For the ground, I used a photo scan of a floor from Sketchfab. Later that, I added some extra details like floating paper and modes and stuff like that. For the lights, I added only two area lights and gave a really low value because I don't want to expose all other parts other than our main model. On top of that, I made a really big cube which can cover the entire scene and give a volume shader. Pro tip, if you want to make your renders look more cinematic, you can change the resolution 90, 20 and 800. Trust me, it will sell the effect. After all the corrections and failed renders, I came up with this output. I hope you guys liked this brief explanation of how I created this shot. So assets and the project files will be available on my Patreon. So go check it out. Link is in the description. So see you on another video. Bye bye.